Okay, so we're here at Home Depot, and what we're looking for is, I believe, one of these right here. I'm going to take a look at it. We'll see. Now, that is blue. It says fights algae. We don't want that. Come over here. That's a tablet. Also fights algae, blah, blah, blah. Let's see where we have it. So now what we're doing, we're uh, going to go find the plumbing section and I'm going to show you how to make up the uh, device you need to uh, do a loop chlorination on your own well. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to get is a washing machine hose. So this one right here, basically the reason why is it has two female ends. Now this is an 8 footer, uh, 5 footer, whatever. It just doesn't really matter how long it is, like 3 foot will do or 6 foot. So this is the cheapest one, so that's probably going to be the one we'll get. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to get, we're going to come over here to the uh, wall of brass fittings. So we have a uh, female by female adapter hose. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to match up to um, half inch male threads because we have a female thread on our well seal and what we're looking to do is basically thread this into your well seal so we're going to get one of these that way the garden hose threads right here will adapt to our female hose okay so we're coming over here now to our black polybutylene uh, black roll fittings so if you have black roll pipe in the ground feeding your house which you you don't have to do this you can run a garden hose from your house but I'm going to go ahead and switch mine over at my well to where it could be up to code. Um, since I have black pipe coming out of my well going down into the ground, what I have to do is cut the pipe and insert this and then have a, uh, a drain which is going to be a boiler drain and it's going to connect to the other end of my hose and directly circulate the water right at the top of the well back down to the well. So now what we have to do is get a uh, hose bib right here to thread into here. Now, if you're going to be doing this with PVC, I recommend buying this right here, PVC rain or shine, uh, medium cement. Do not buy this all purpose cement because this will take 24 hours to dry. If you're using PVC, this will take about 60 seconds to dry. Then we come over here. If you have a one inch PVC, what I would recommend getting, let's, here's one that would work. You could cut your uh, pipe, have one inch threads. You could do something like this. Looking for just a regular old T. All right, so if you have one inch PVC, what you're gonna do is cut your uh, down pipe that's going down into your ground, or you can cut your cross pipe, which is going out of your well into the ground, and you can cut it cut about an inch out of it and glue it in and then you're also going to need this bushing here you're going to take this bushing you're going to glue it into the top of this like so and then have you a threaded boiler drain that we're going to thread into this piece but i'm not going to use this you would just use these right here if you had uh, pvc going to your house all right so now we're over here at our brass valves and what we're looking for is since this has three quarter inch threads we're looking for a three quarter inch. Come over here. We're gonna get probably this one right here, yeah. All right, so we've gotten the two things that we need. The only thing that we didn't get from this store would be the uh, chlorinated pool shock. Uh, I carry that in stock at, in my truck, so since they don't have the right thing here, I'm gonna show you what exactly that you're supposed to use in order to chlorinate your well to try to kill any of the bacteria, the bad smell, whatever it may be. So I'm gonna show you that now. You know, I really feel for folks that come to a uh, hardware store like this and try to shop for plumbing parts. It is a nightmare and I'm glad I don't do it normally, but I'm making the video this way to really help people because this is how the, a typical person would have to do it. So might as well do it the way y'all would do it. So uh, I'm here at the house and the first thing I'm going to do is go down in the basement and turn the breaker off to the well. Alright, I'm here at the breaker box. I'm going to open it up and this would be a sub panel they have rigged up for the generator. 
and on it they have all these things and the well pump so I'm going to turn this off and now the well pump is all the electricity is off now we're going to go outside open up a spigot and drain off all the pressure we're going to let that empty then we can plumb up the well head all right so we're out here at the well and I've got the cover off and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the well. Now this is pool shock it. In the ingredients this is calcium hypochloride 68%. So this is what you want uh, to put in your well. Um, I had looked at the stuff at Lowe's and that was a little bit different. It was made for um, saltwater pools. So if you can find the uh, pool shock that says calcium hypochloride kills bacteria. That's what we want. So what we're going to do, this little blue plug was right here in the well seal. We're going to go ahead and take that out and pour it in that hole. And what I've done is I've cut a tiny little corner off and that's what we're going to do. Now this well is 300 feet deep. So we're going to use 9 ounces of this which is about two-thirds of a bag. Now, if you take notice, this well seal is not sitting down flush. There is a four-inch well liner in this well, and the six-inch casing is actually sitting on top of this. So, typical systems don't have liners in them. This one does. So, if you do, you have to make sure that this hole is going to line up with that four-inch pipe before you do your loop chlorination. So I have all the parts here that I got from uh, Home Depot. I've got the female on both end hose. This will be the fitting that goes into the top of the well seal. This is gonna go in my pipe and then this is gonna thread into that. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you. This little fitting is gonna thread right into that. Okay, now that's in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up and cut this and install that uh, fitting and show you how it works. Okay, so we had uh, an inline splice here and basically what we're going to do is put this in its place. Now to get um, this pipe apart or to put it together, what I use is a blowtorch. You just heat the pipe for about 10 seconds and it becomes extremely pliable. So we're going to look here. These are basically bump stops for the pipe. We're going to figure out that's going to be good for there. So we need to come down to about the S and cut it at the S on service. Now we're going to install the fitting. Be mindful not to heat up the clamps too bad because you can heat those clamps up and um, you'll burn yourself. Nice fit. We're going to point that in a direction to where it doesn't interfere with the concrete well cover. Alright, All right, so we have the fitting put in. I've got the top pipe mounted, uh, both clamps on. I like to do double clamps, that way it's just added safety, uh, less likely of a chance of it to leak. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my boiler drain and put my thread sealant on it. This is called Slick Tight. You can also use Teflon tape. If you use blue Teflon tape, I would say three to four wraps. If you use white Teflon tape, I'd say five to six. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in now. Okay, so I've got my thread Loctite uh, thread sealant on there. Go ahead and put this in, tighten it by hand. Get your channel locks. Now you don't want to tighten this too much or you'll crack that plastic fitting. And you also want to be able to access the threads on your boiler drain. And that's about where we'll leave it. And now in the future, if you ever wanted to water the garden, like this place has this flower garden, you could actually take the lid off of the well, hook a garden hose up to this, and you would have the best pressure you'd have anywhere at your house. You'd have it right here. All right, so now all we gotta do is take our hose, got this end here, we're going to go ahead and put that on there. Bingo.
go. And take the other end of it right here. We're gonna come over here to this. Thread that on. And now what we can do is we'll have to go turn the breaker on. We'll do that in a second. But you can use this as a metering device whether you want it wide open or partially open depends on how long you want to let it run so you can crack it and it will just slowly bleed out you know one or two gallons a minute slowly and let it run or typically what I do I open it about halfway that way you still get pressure in your house and um, it circulates a large amount of water for about a 12 hour period and then when you're all done with this you just disconnect this and leave this connected right here and then let it dump out in your yard or out in the woods or whatever what you're doing then is trying to pump off all that chlorine uh, any of the bacteria that bad smell that you're trying to kill you're just basically now have concentrated all that in your water and you want to get rid of it so you would just disconnect it from the top here on top of the ground let's go turn the breaker on all right we're back down here in the basement we open up our breaker panel turn our well breaker on now the pump is running and now this house, what I noticed, it has water softener and a acid neutralizer. So the water softener itself is filled with a plastic resin bead. Now the chlorine that we put in the well to sterilize it, it will actually turn the plastic resin inside of this into a gooey gelatin style stuff. So what we have to do, better to be safe than sorry, is put the water softener in bypass. So I'm gonna come over here where the bypass valve is, grab it, turn it into bypass. I'm gonna come over here to the acid neutralizer and also turn it into bypass. That way we do not mess up customer stuff. And basically you'll leave it in bypass for a couple of days. This is now, this is totally if you have a water softener on your system and you're doing this. If you do not have a water softener or some sort of large filters like this, you do not need to do this. This is just for the people who have water softeners because we don't want to ruin anybody's stuff. All right, so basically after you've done that, um, your water is going to be a really, really strong chlorine smell. Since the smell of the chlorine will be in the water, basically um, after a 24 hour period, take the hose off, let it run into the woods, let that run. Um, I'm gonna say let it run for a minimum two to three hours. Um, you don't wanna run it wide open if you know that you can run the well dry. So run as much water out of it as you can. You're trying to evacuate the well, get all the stuff out to allow the water, allow the well, in, <clears throat> the well to fill up with fresh water. So that's the plan here. Once you don't no longer smell that chlorine coming out of the garden hose or coming out of your faucet in your house, you can come back to your water softener and then put it back into uh, the correct mode to where it'll work. Take it out of bypass. Do the same thing if you have any other style of filter. Now, if you have a regular cartridge filter, that's fine. Those ones that you know you just buy a little 10 inch cartridge, you put it, that's fine. You can let the chlorine run through that, it'll clean it. But these have a special media in it and you cannot let the chlorine go through the media. All right, so we're back out here at the well, and we can hear it running. So basically, this is just going to meter the flow. You can slow it down or speed it up. And it's just following this hose and returning it right back into the well. And basically, all you're doing is circulating this strictly in the well. And that's going to give it a really good thorough cleaning. And then in about 24 hours, you just turn this off, unhook this, throw that end out in the yard, and then open it up and let it run. And this should take care of any bacteria failing. If you had a you know, water sample, whatever, um, if you're suffering from a really nasty putrid smell, whether it be sulfur or just whatever that nasty smell is, follow these steps, get you some pool shock, buy these few fittings from Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, your local plumbing supply store, and anybody can do this with basic hand tools. Um, you don't have to have PVC cutters, you can use a hacksaw, um, but basically it's a 5 16 wrench, and the tools you kind of see here on the ground, just basic plumbing stuff. So uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe. 
I'm trying to get enough subscribers to where I can become monetized. Whether you watch these videos or not, as long as you find one of my videos helpful, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to spread my knowledge to the people out there who need it. Um, not everything needs someone to come out. Sometimes people can do things on their own. That's all I'm trying to do. So if I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers. I know I've got a long way. But if you found my video helpful, that's all you got to do. And that's all I'm asking. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully it helped. Comment if you have any questions. And I'll be happy to comment back and help you through anything. Thank you all. Bye-bye.